Gimbals have become an extremely popular tool for videographers, and I feel like at times they're a little overused. I have two of them though. However, I don't really use them that much because I generally prefer to shoot handheld with this rig for my FX30. Let me explain why. Gimbal is a pretty general term that can include a lot of camera stabilizers. And while there are bigger and more expensive ones that get used more on professional film sets, like Steadicams, RE Trinities, and even just bigger versions of consumer level gimbals, I'm mostly gonna be talking about the regular handheld gimbals that most people are familiar with. What is a gimbal you ask? It's basically a group of motorized arms that hold a camera in place and either prevent or allow it to move in certain ways to allow for steadier and smoother shots. The motors basically eliminate the small movements made by the operator while they're simply just holding it or while they're moving around. They don't just hold the camera still though. The motors allow them to smoothly rotate around each axis to create a much more fluid movement than handheld. They usually also have several modes that allow for a variety of uses. On most gimbals like this, you can set each axis to either lock or follow. So when you lock an axis, it doesn't move, obviously. And if it's set to follow, it will follow the movement of the handle. In this case, I've got pan follow. So when I pan, it follows where the handle is pointing. But if I tilt or roll, nothing happens because those two axes are locked. Another benefit to gimbals is as long as you're not trying to do anything fancy, they can be fairly easy to use and they can make a substantial difference in the shots you're getting without any significant difference in skill. Handheld rigs, on the other hand, can vary greatly from nothing on the camera to maybe a handle or two, to a full-on cinema rig with monitors, audio, wireless transmission, extra batteries, a map box, the list goes on. In most cases, you would need a camera cage to attach all these accessories. And that leads me to the first benefit, customization. There's so many brands that make camera rigging gear and the accessories that you would attach to a camera. And most of those brands have so many options for each accessory. So the limit to the unique camera rig builds that you can make is ridiculously high. Plus building and experimenting with different camera rigs is really fun. It's like expensive Legos that you can then go and shoot videos with. And this customization means you can not only build it how you like it, but you can also adjust based on the situation. Like if you need a shoulder rig, or if you need extra battery life, or you need an easy rig, or you need a wireless transmission, you can pretty easily adjust rigs to fit the needs of any shoot. The main obstacle with that is you need access to certain equipment, so that will inevitably incur an extra cost. The main benefit when it comes to actually using a camera handheld is the control that the operator has. Any movement that you make is going to be seen in the image, which, you know, not always gonna be a good thing, but you do have a lot more control and you can be much more deliberate with your movements, especially in high energy situations if you need to make fast movements back and forth and just to add that energy into the picture that you're taking. And that natural camera shake from moving around can induce that energy into the scene. And because rigs are generally much heavier than cameras on their own, they will cut out all of the micro jitters that you would experience with a much lighter setup. So you can remove the little shakes while still having very natural feeling movement of the camera, which can make the audience feel like they're in the scene or that the camera itself is a character. Here's a few tests of the same shots using the FX30 on the Moza Air 2 gimbal and with it fully rigged up. It should be pretty easy to tell which one is which in most of these tests, particularly the ones when I'm walking or running because the gimbal will take out a lot of those medium sized shakes. And when just holding them still, you should be able to see the natural shake of the handheld shot while the gimbal shots feel more like they're floating. And in this running example, the handheld shots adds a kind of energy that you just don't get with the gimbal. And for some reason, I actually found this one a lot easier handheld. When it comes to practicality, there's a few things to consider. Neither gimbals nor handheld rigs are just grab out of the bag and go solutions. They both require some setup. Gimbals take a minute to balance and can sometimes be a little finicky. You also need to know how to balance a gimbal properly for it to work as intended. And 
Like with most things, some are easier to work with than others. Handheld rigs, on the other hand, can either be super quick and easy to set up or take a long time to set up. And that entirely depends on how many accessories you have, how those accessories attach, think NATO rails versus two quarter 20 screws, and how familiar you are with the rig that you're building and the accessories that are a part of it. The same is true for traveling with gear. Most gimbals will come with their own case, which is nice, but it is another thing to carry. Whereas rigging gear can usually fit in any camera bag, but again, that depends on how elaborate the setup is. When it comes to power, like I mentioned, handheld rigs can easily include a battery that can then be used to power all of the powered accessories, including the camera, monitor, etc. Or if you don't need as much battery life, you can use individual batteries for each device and just power them individually. Gimbals use either a rechargeable battery inside the handle or removable rechargeable batteries like this. Generally, I would prefer a USB-C charging one like this one, where you can just plug it in and charge it by USB-C. Most modern gimbals are like that. The Moza Air 2 is a little older, but in either case, it is another device that you need to monitor the battery level of and charge, because if your gimbal dies in the middle of a shoot and you need it, there's not a whole lot you can do, if you don't have a spare battery, of course. They do generally have a pretty long battery life though, so as long as it's charged before a shoot, you're probably not gonna have that issue. Gimbals also have the issues of weight limits. So if you have a heavier or even just bigger camera, you're gonna need to get a bigger and more expensive gimbal. Whereas with handheld rigs, heavier is generally better and there's no real weight limit aside from what you can comfortably handle personally. Rigs are also a bit more versatile because you can usually put the entire rig on a tripod or if you need to put it on a shoulder rig or use an easy rig. Whereas if you take a camera off a gimbal, usually you'll only have the camera itself. So no monitors, no audio, put that on a tripod, then you have to add things to it if you want those things. Both gimbals and rigging gear can be quite expensive, although gimbals are generally gonna be more of a one-time bigger cost because you're just gonna buy the gimbal unless you're gonna buy a heap of accessories for it and actually like rig up the gimbal. And rigging gear can generally be more expensive, especially if you get a lot of it or if you get the really good stuff. But it's also easier to slowly build up with a gimbal, you basically just buy the gimbal. But if you're building a camera rig, maybe you start with a cage and a handle, then you get a monitor, then you get a base plate, then you get a V-mount battery, then you get more handles and you can just keep going. My point is it can be easier to get into because you can start cheap and easy and slowly build to a bigger and better rig. Finally, this is sort of an issue with both, but it also just kind of makes sense. To be good at shooting with a gimbal or handheld, you need to learn and practice. And I'd argue that that isn't really an issue because that's the case with pretty much anything. So buying a gimbal or building a camera rig isn't going to instantly make your shots so much better. They might help with certain things, but to get good, you need to practice. Overall, I generally prefer to shoot handheld for a few reasons. One, I prefer the more natural movement of the handheld rig and the energy that it can produce. Two, I just haven't shot that much with gimbals, so I haven't really gotten good with them, so I have more experience with shooting handheld. Three, I find it more comfortable to use, not only because I can adjust the handle how I like it and adjust the weight distribution to sort of balance it better, but you also have more access to the camera itself when you're adjusting focus or zoom or adjusting exposure, even pressing record. You just have so much more access to the camera because your hands are basically on it, whereas with the gimbal, it's not as easy. Four, I find it more fun and interesting to build rigs like this than to just set up a gimbal. And finally, I think it looks better. It just looks better and more professional. Like, look at that. That just looks so much better than that, you know? All that being said, gimbals definitely do have their place. A real estate videographer wouldn't show up to a shoot without one. And there's definitely a lot of other situations where you would want a stabilized camera. But what do you think? Do you have a preference? Do you have a blind hatred or love for one or the other? Or are you a reasonable human being that understands that they're just tools for different jobs. If you wanna see my full video about the two gimbals that I have, go watch that one. If you wanna know more about my FX30 rig, go watch that one and do all the other things because I got one coming on that map box that was featured coming soon. Okay, bye. I don't know.
Let's just walk off into the distance. There's no distance to walk off into. Cut, that was only 54 minutes. Uh.